So you listen to me and you listen well. Are you behind on your credit card bills? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. Is your landlord ready to evict you? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. Does your girlfriend think you're a worthless loser? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. All you have to do today is pick up that phone and speak the words that I have taught you. And I will make you richer than the most powerful CEO in the United States of America. Yeah, pick up the phone and start dialing. Today's video, I wanna to talk to you about how you can use your phone to make you wealthy. Yes, wealthy. Your phone is a money maker and it is used to help you get appointments, but more importantly, get more sales. But it's a tactic, it's an important tactic at that, but without a strategy, it won't work best for you. And so that's my goal for this video today is help you use your phone to make you wealthy and give you a strategy and an understanding that you didn't have before. So a little bit of a backstory, I started in the home loan industry as a loan originator, the mortgage industry back in 2006. And during that time, when I first started there, I had to pave my way, I had to earn my street cred, if you will. I was making over 250 calls every single day, literally not even hanging up the phone, similar to what you'd see in the movie Boiler Phone or Boiler Room. I would actually pick up the phone and I would start dialing. And I would dial number after number, hit the little button on the phone and hit and call the next number. I was calling over 250 people per day, getting over 10 applications per day. And man, it was tiring, it was tedious and you know, Getting hung up on by people sucks. It's not a fun part of the job, but the truth is and the reality is though, it's gonna make you a ton of money. And what I love about it is it makes you money fast. You have the right database, you're calling the right person with the right strategy behind you. Telemarketing can make you money really faster than almost anything else can. And that's why it's still being used today. And I wanted to bring up this video to help you guys make more money. Cold calling at the end of the day is a numbers game. It's a volume game. And that's the part of the strategy is you've got to call a ton of people with the right script. And when I started my first business back in 2007, I took the knowledge that I had gained from my time in the mortgage industry and applied it to my graphics and web design and printing business. And so that was huge for me. It was a huge level up and I was able to start my business and get momentum very quickly. It's one thing to say that telemarketing is effective, but it's another one to show you the stats. And so I want to read these to you. For example, 82% of buyers said they have accepted meetings with a salesperson after a series of contacts beginning with a sales cold call. 41% of sales representatives say that their phone is the most valuable tool for work. That's almost half the people, along with their CRM, software, email, and social media prospecting. So those facts are the facts and they speak for themselves. The truth is the majority of the phone calls that you make, you're gonna get told no, you're gonna get turned down, but the key is to get as many no's as you can because it's only a numbers game and you're going to get yeses. So the more no's you get, that means you're closer to a yes. And this is part of understanding the telemarketing game and how to really maximize it for yourself. I don't want you to be let down by the fact that you're getting no after no after no or getting told off by people or told not to call. Depending on business to business versus business to consumer cold calls, you're gonna get some different types of reactions, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but I don't want you to be discouraged. If you keep getting told no and you're not getting yeses, that's a good opportunity for you to tweak your, your pitch and your script and how you're approaching people on the phone and make it better. If you're getting told no and you're not getting yeses, that's what you need to do first. I wanted to take this moment to ask you guys, have you ever done cold calling before? Have you ever called somebody that you didn't know from some sort of database or list that you have? Have you ever done it? Have you had success? If you've never tried it, tell me why. Are you afraid to get on the phone? I wanna know more about it. So let me know who you are, drop your name, tell me where you're from. Let me know if you've ever done cold calling and if you haven't, why you haven't done it yet. So I'm just curious, I wanna know from you guys, have you ever done cold calling? Have you ever called warm leads? Have you ever done telemarketing? Love to know your background and your experience of that if you have. Drop a comment and said, I love telemarketing or yes, I've done telemarketing. If you've never done it before, it's probably why you're watching this video. I wanna tell me why haven't you tried it yet? Are you afraid? Do you feel like you don't have the scripts? You don't have a process? You don't have a strategy? Let me know. I wanna know about you. I wanna to get to know you a little bit. This is a social platform. So this is an opportunity for us to get to know each other a little bit better. Tell me where you're from and drop your name down below. All right, so now I wanna share a little bit of foundational stuff so you can get the most out of telemarketing for your business and you know what options are available to you. So I wanna talk about the five softwares and the five ways that you can implement telemarketing into your business. The first telemarketing software 
is the predictive dialer. The predictive dialer is neat because it sends multiple calls out at one time, typically three phone calls per agent, but it dials multiple numbers at the same time and whichever one answers, it sends it over to that agent and the agent can actually increase their connectivity and their efficiency significantly with a predictive dialer. These are really, really cool and really important if you're gonna be dialing a lot of numbers. The second type of telemarketing software is an auto dialer. Now, I wanna preface it with this. I gotta get the ugly part out first. Auto dialers are actually illegal unless you're a nonprofit or a politician. Unless you have an approved list of people that have agreed to be part of your auto dialer, it is illegal. Now, the agent actually answers. You'll see this sometimes happen to you. Will there be a quiet pause and then you'll say something? And then when you say something, they come in the line, yes, is Mr. Blah, 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 blah. That's an auto dialer. A lot of people in third world countries are using these, even though they're illegal in the US, but there's thousands and thousands of complaints. I think it's like 4,000 to 18,000 complaints uh, on a monthly basis that come in because of auto dialers. They're effective software, they're effective to use. They're also very similar to what you've probably heard of robo calls. The difference between the auto dialer and the robo call, real quick, because I don't want you to use robo calls ever. But with robocalls, it's actually an automated recording. And then it says, if you're interested, press one. If you're like, you need to renew your car warranty or thank you for calling Marriott Hotels, right? Those annoying robo dialers. Those things go all the time. They use fake caller ID numbers. So you call the number back and it's actually somebody else's number. Stay away from robo dialers, but these are pre recorded messages versus the auto dialer. Very similar uh, kind of technology, but one has a pre recorded versus a live person. The fourth telemarketing and dialing software that you can use and something that I actually use myself in my own business. So I'm speaking from personal experience here. There's a couple of them. It's called VoIP. There's a few different VoIP software, softwares out there. The first VoIP software I want to mention, I'm just going to bring up a couple of them for you. I'm not paid. I'm not endorsed to bring any of these up, but these are important. I want to share these with you so you guys can implement these into your business. The first one is Call Hippo. We use Call Hippo because we can do live transfers and on hold and all kinds of really cool features that some of these other ones don't have. The second one is CallRail. CallRail is another big one. It's a popular software. Um, you also have things like Grasshopper. Grasshopper gives you a lot of control over your calling, recording calls, things like that. And it's on the cheaper end. And then the last one I wanted to mention, which is completely free and you can use this. You can also record calls. And in some states you have to disclose if you're recording a call and that's Google Voice. Google Voice is a great software. Google obviously has a massive suite of softwares. This is the first calling software that I actually ever used when I was in the home improvement space. It's something that I use in my own agency and I actually transferred away from it just a few years ago, but Google Voice is a free tool, so there's no excuse for you not to use some sort of call tracking, call recording, or calling system. The fourth type of calling system or calling software that you can use is the typical old school, basically, you know, cup and freaking string method, but it's the telephone, the traditional landline telephone. This old school landline telephone is starting to become a thing of the past as technology is really changing. There's different programs and softwares out there that everything is running through the internet now. So typical landlines are starting to become a thing of the past. But if you have a landline phone, you can use a landline phone in your office or at your home to dial numbers. And you can use that number exclusively for telemarketing. But you gotta make sure if somebody says, take me off your list, you remove them from your list and you never call them again, because this can be a huge liability for you, which I'll talk about here in just a minute. Now, the fifth way, and this is a really common one, this is the one that I use most often paired with one of the softwares, is my actual cell phone itself. I call people from my cell phone, I send text messages from my cell phone, I love reaching out to people from my personal line because it's just way more personal that way, it's not coming from sort of tracking system, but it is harder to track if you're using just your landline. So my team has gotten on me about using the software on my cell phone through Call Hippo, Call Rail, and some of the other ones, to track and record these calls so they can hear what's going on on my side. So using the cell phone as your last case resort, you can use your cell phone along with those softwares, but don't just use just your cell phone unless you absolutely have to, unless it's somebody that you already have an existing relationship. But for cold calls, I wanna really encourage you to use some sort of software so you can record the call and document that process. Now, the last thing that I want you to understand in terms of doing these cold calls versus warm calls is there's some liabilities. Somebody can get really pissed off and they can file a complaint with the FCC. This is not something that you want. Each one of those violations from the SCC can actually cost you or FTC, Federal Trade Commission or FCC, I don't remember exactly which firm it is. Don't quote me on this, but I know it's one of the two of those. You can be fined $100,000 
for actually calling somebody that's on the do not call list. So one of the pieces of advice, and I know somebody that's actually happened to, so one of the pieces of advice that I wanna give you is if you have a list of people, run that list through the do not call registry. Make sure that you back out any of those numbers that are on the do not call registry. If you wanna take the chance and you got good insurance and you feel like you're safe to do it, give it a shot, but you're really putting yourself at risk by doing a cold call to somebody who's on the do not call list. If they get really, really upset, they can file a complaint and that can come back on you and cost you a ton of money. So just wanna put that out there and make sure you know that. So do me a favor. If you're finding this content helpful, you can do me a huge favor and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and again, tell me who you are. If you're watching this, the majority, it's like 96% of the people that watch these videos never even subscribe. I don't know why that is, what happens, what causes that, but I would love to have that subscription for you because it tells YouTube that you love my channel, that this content was helpful for you, especially when you hit that like button. If you only want to hit the like button, I'd appreciate it either way, but hit the subscribe button too if you can. It'd mean a lot to me. All right, so now that we've shared all of that, I wanna give you some tips. This is where the, where the gold, the, bill, the real big gold nuggets come in, and I wanna share some tips on how to really implement telemarketing into your business. So my first tip for you is to buy data, buy a list. I want you to buy a list, I want you to run that list, and a lot of these telemarketing, or a lot of these list selling services actually run the list through the do not call registry for you, so you would check with them and make sure that they have, but there's tons of companies out there. When I was in the mortgage industry, what we did is we bought actual lists from the title companies. So the title companies, when you register and you buy a new house and you have a title or you change, you do a refinance, things like that, you have these title leads that come in and these title leads, mortgage companies buy them. And so the stacks of papers, and I went through page by page by page by page calling people from the title leads. You can buy lists nowadays from companies like List Giant, and there's a bunch of different resources. I don't have enough time today to tell you where to buy all these lists, but go buy a targeted list of homeowners, income, age, geographics, wherever they're at. Buy a targeted list of people so you're not starting from zero and just calling people out of the phone book or from some random directory or the white pages or something like that. Like Buy an actual list that's targeted. This is really important. So the second piece of advice that I wanna give you today is really important. I want to encourage you that a warm call is a lot better than just a straight cold call. And the way you can implement that when it comes to telemarketing is to do some other marketing in advance, whether it's Facebook, whether it's a direct mail piece, whether it's a text message, whether it's a voicemail drop, there's all different ways that you can actually warm that person up, get them familiar with you first, and then you follow it up with a phone call. Like, hey, what's up, John? This is Adrian. Hey, I wanted to check, did you guys get my email? Hey, did you get my Facebook message? Hey, did you get my mail my letter in the mail right being able to ask that question no no what what letter are you talking about right it starts the conversation and it's warm it's not completely cold doing a warm call is a lot better you're gonna have a lot better results on a warm call versus a cold call so take some time to prep the list that you have and if you can send emails if you get the emails as well as the phone numbers do that first then send them some mail if you get addresses i'd buy a full data list i wouldn't buy just the phone numbers I'd buy a full data list of your emails, phone numbers, and address, and make sure it's worth the extra money, but make sure that you're actually warming these people up before you call them, and then just say, hey, I, got, I sent you out a letter last week, just wanted to make sure you got it, right? You send out a nice greeting card or something special that's gonna make them remember you and make you stand out. Maybe you send the $2 bill or something like that in the mail, but understanding that you need to warm these people up. And then if you make a cold call and they hang up on you, you gotta still continue to follow up. That doesn't mean you end the conversation there just because they hung up on you. You gotta be persistent. The, the name of the game when it comes to sales and when it comes to marketing is consistency and persistence. So I want you to really walk away with that as well. My third tip is you really need to understand the difference between business to business and business to consumer. Those are completely different markets. How you deal with a business owner is completely different how you're gonna deal with a general everyday consumer like a senior citizen versus a CEO. Two completely different types of conversations, right? So really segmenting your audience and know who you're going after and how to approach them. Now, the good part of dealing with a business owner is there's kind of like an unspoken code of ethics that's out there is they're not just gonna hang up on you. Unless you say something that pisses them off, that irritates them and annoys them. I got lots of examples like that. You can see in the movie Boiler Room where they do that, where they're calling business owners. Calling a business owner, there's a level of professionalism that they're gonna have. They're not gonna be an a-hole because it's their reputation on the line. They wanna put on their best face. With a homeowner, the majority of them are probably gonna hang up on you, insult you, tell you to never call, take me off your list, right? So it's different. But I don't want that to discourage you from calling homeowners, especially if that's your target market. If your target market is business owners, you really need to understand the messaging and the script 
between the two and create scripting just for that, which I'm gonna talk about here in just a minute. So number four, like I said, is scripts. You wanna keep it short, you wanna keep it sweet. Don't give them too many opportunities to shut you down and tell you no. You wanna get yeses, right? Hey, what's going on, is now a good time? You got a couple minutes, right? You wanna make sure that you approach this conversation the right way. I don't have a time to do a full sales training on how to do telemarketing and how to make that first introduction, but I will do that in another video for you. But it's really important that you make it natural, that you just yourself, you have that posture, just like you would if you're standing at the door of somebody's house or you're standing face to face, you wanna stand up, be happy, smile while you're talking. People can hear that over the phone, but have a script of what you're going to say. Hey, what's up, John? This is Adrian. Can I talk to you for a minute? I have a quick question. Oh yeah, where are you from? Oh, I'm from blah, blah, blah company, right? These questions are gonna happen. So having a script is gonna give you a much higher chance of success. And I don't want you to just shoot from the hip. I want you to have it written down and I want it to be short, sweet, right to the point and do not waste their time. Tell them, I'm not here to waste your time, right? Tell them those types of things. Tell them things that are gonna make them feel comfortable. Hey, I just need a couple minutes of your time. Do you have that, right? Be respectful of their time. Tip number five goes back to what I was kind of just saying and tip number four, but this is body language. Body language is part of your communication. It's a big part of your communication. So you need to stand tall, you need to smile. Sometimes people like to pace while they're talking on the phone. I know I do that myself. If you got any pacers here, drop down a comment, I'm a pacer. But if some people like to pace, you gotta be confident and you gotta be assertive when you're talking on the phone. If you're like, hi, um, yeah, this is John Morris from uh, blah, blah, blah insurance. I was wondering if I could talk to you guys about, they're gonna be like, sorry, not interested, right? But if you say, hey, this is John. I wanted to talk to Bill. Can I talk to Bill, please? Yeah, this is Bill. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Hey, I have a couple questions for you. Is now a good time? I can hear some noise in the background. Maybe you got some kids or some family, or maybe you got a busy day going on. I want to be respectful of your time. I just need like 60 seconds. You got a minute for me? Right. Having that assertiveness is going to make a big difference on the phone. You are leading that conversation. You want to be in control of that conversation. And telemarketing is such a powerful tool. If you do this the right way, you're going to see incredible results and you're going to make a lot of money. So that wraps up telemarketing. There's a lot more that I could talk about, about training and pitches and scripts and all that stuff, but that's more content for another day. I wanna be respectful of your guys' time. And I also wanna invite you guys out to join my community. I have a community of designers, web, motion, and graphic designers. It's literally one of the greatest design communities on the planet. I've been in part of lots of them, and this one is very unique. We're doing summits and trainings and collaborating with each other and lifting each other up and even praying for each other in times of need and reaching out when we need help. And I would love to invite you personally, right now, one-on-one. -on -one. There's a link down in the description to join the Instagraphics Pro Network. It's a private Facebook community. If you're not on Facebook, uh, sorry, I can't help you there, but I need you to answer all the questions as well to joining the group. If you don't answer all of them, I'll hit the decline button. I need quality, not quantity. We're not looking for a huge group. We're looking for a group of quality people who are really chasing after, who are passionate, coachable, and hungry. And if you're that person, I would love to have you. So that's my invitation for you. If you want to join the Instagraphics Pro Network, we'd be humbled and honored to have you. So that's my video for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you back here next Wednesday, Monday, or Friday. Until next time, I'm Adrian Boisel, and as always, keep looking up.